Hi everybody, greetings, hello and welcome. This is Dennis from Rigid Audio and in today's video we're going to create a lovely little pet machine with a few beautiful soundscapes and textures. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So I got uh, contact UI Maker already open and we click on new project to create a new one. And we call that mm, Moody Wave. Moody Wave, okay, that's a beautiful name for a pet machine. And for this project, I did uh, create a few graphics that I want to use. As you can see here, these little banded, bent sliders. And before we start, let's import those into the Contact UI Maker library by just dragging it in. As you can see, everything is already set up perfectly. That's because of the naming convention. You can see it says slider, HOR, which stands for horizontal uh, tiling. And we got one, 128 frames, so everything's perfect. We can just click import, and then we have the stuff in the library, like so. Here it is. Okay. Okay, let's continue. So, mm, oh, wait. First of all, let us choose a lovely background picture for our instrument. Yeah, I think I, I really like this one. Don't know why it has some, some great <laughs> moody feel to it. Okay, let's make that a bit... Yeah, a little bit greenish or something. Okay, onto the sliders again. Let me drag that one in. Uh, maybe that one. No, that was the wrong one. Press delete to delete that. Uh, I guess, yeah, it was this one. Okay, perfect. Uh, what we are going to do is maybe let's say this instrument is going to have four layers. So we... Or well, actually, let's make it two for now. We can always update or change things later. And these, I uh, I'd say, uh, we choose just we type in volume for that one. Volume and volume, and maybe pen and um, pen for the first and the second layer. And in the let me arrange that a bit better quickly. Okay, like so. And in the center, maybe what we can do is we could. Uh, Put in a knob or something that does something. Mm. Actually, I like that one. Okay, it's a bit small. Let's see if we have a different one. Or you know what? I take that big black knob over here. So yeah, that looks straight. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that is going to do now. So that let's make a few minus signs over there. Okay. And uh, that's okay for a start. So we were going to use two layers. So that means, <coughs> excuse me, that means that this one should control the volume for the first sample layer. So we go to our actions via double clicking and choose volume sign. Same for the right one, volume and assign. So then this one is going to control sample layer B. And this one is going to create a uh, control simple AI. Okay, perfect. Now we do the same for the panning. Pan. Uh, da, da, da. Panning left. Yeah, that's perfect. Same for that one. And pan left, right balance. Okay, great. So that does control simple layer A. That one does control simple layer B. Okay. For now, I say that we. Oops, uh, let's say what could this thing do? Maybe we can add some kind of a, a beautiful button that brings everything everything to shine or something that makes it bigger with some reverb sort of kind of a, a multi-effect knob, effects knob or something. Mm, let's call that shine for now. I don't know why I like shine. Okay. Concerning the actions, we want we want this knob to control all simple layers. It's right in the center, so it should affect both A and B uh, sample layers. Let's see what we could assign to that one. But I guess it would be good to start with a big reverb or something. Reverb size both reverb send amount. Yes, we could use the, for now, simply the reverb send amount for both layers, for both layers A and B. Okay, let's give it a quick look and see what we got. Here it is, Moody Wave NKI. Let's open that up in contact. Okay, takes a bit of time. 
don't know why. Ah, there we go. Okay. So let's see. Okay, we got the big knob. Perfect. Well, actually, then we could start right start right to map uh, samples and let's get rid of the demonstration of basic saw wave as we don't need that and let me move that aside oh didn't know i could scale it that way how oh, cool is that then anyway so i got some uh samples over here in my samples photo let me first of all copy those samples to our project to our moody wave project so that everything is in place moody wave samples here we go, put them in. There we are. Okay, let's see what we got. Those are semitones. Whoa, that was low. Excuse, excuse me. Does it recall that? No. Okay, that's bad. One second. Okay, audio problem solved. So where was we? So we had a few samples here. Let's see that we can... Let's map those in. Straight from the desktop. See, we got 16 of them. I guess it's every third key or something. So it should be something like this. Make that occupy the whole keyboard range. Yes, that does work. Okay. That's cool. And then let's map and sample layer B with something different. Maybe this one. Like so. Oh, da, 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 da. Uh, come on. That's a bit hard to see. Yeah, that should work. Okay. Yeah, we can hear that's already working. Okay, f next thing on the list is, of course, we have to... Um, no, actually, that should work already. Oh, the scaling is a bit... The mouse scaling is a bit bad. Let me fix that quick. Um... Okay, sometimes that's a bit confusing. So, okay, that's better. Let me update the mouse case so that we don't need to move the mouse that far. So we need, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we need a bigger value. It's a, uh, There's a minus as a prefix. That's because then it means it is a uh, vertical mouse movement. Let's see, maybe 850, 850. And let's do the same for those ones as well, like so. And yeah, okay, like this. Quick compile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Update. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, so these should control the volume now. Let me see. Yes. Okay, perfect. So now we can kind of mix and mix and blend those. Okay, the next thing is, of course, what we need is uh, some kind of envelope because that has nothing to do with the pet or not that much. Sounds very staccato. Oops. Uh, let's bring in some ADSR. Well, actually, we can use those as well. I like those sliders. Yeah, why not? But they're a bit big, I guess. Now we take a smaller one here. Let's try this one. Okay. Uh, duplicate, 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 like so. Uh, it's not that perfectly al aligned, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe like this. Okay. Uh, okay, that's a little. Okay. So that would be the attack and decay sustain and release ready then okay wait well, maybe let's make the grid a bit bigger let's see yeah okay well i guess there's a little bit of fine tuning needed anyway um okay let's assign the actions <clears throat> so we need a tech Decay, oh, sustain, and release. Where's my mouse? Oh, okay. And now, of course, we need to tell the contact UI maker which sample layers that should affect. So, as it's always, it's A and B. We can, of course, if we want, 
change those separately, but for now we have them globally for uh, both both sample ads. So let's have a quick look. Here we go. So, so that since this is a pet thing, let's make a big attack and release. Yeah. That does work great. Okay. So now let's take care of our big shine knob and what we can do with that one. Oh, oh I did accidentally move it. That's why I press L now to lock it so I can't move it anymore. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got. The first thing we had, oh yeah, right, we got the reverb center mount. Let me verify that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, you can clearly hear, clearly hear that. Okay, so we go, could, could, uh, could go a bit crazy with that one uh, at a few more things. Maybe we can say that this one, if it says it does shine things, we could open up a cattle filter or something maybe as well at the same time. I guess we use the global multi-mode filter cut off main, but you know what? Yeah, no, let's use the, the group filter like that. And let's see what it does. Okay. Yeah, it does filter things. Yeah, I think that is quite cool. Let's go even more crazy. Uh, let's see, there are tons of options. We could add some chorus or flanger thing, or maybe fly effect is also a very nice form of master processor. Yeah, for now, let's, you know what? Let's try a phaser or something. Why not? Phaser, global phase effect, dev, center effect. We need the, you now I have to see where that is. Let me see. Phaser center mount. Okay, perfect. Phaser center mount. And again, we do that for both A and B sample layers. Compile the thing and give it a go. So let's have a listen. Yeah. No, I think what would be would be cool is if we did add some some <coughs> excuse me some modulation some modulation for example maybe we could add modulation for the panning that could be worth a try let's see if we can do that let's use a different slider or something or we go uh, yeah maybe there a simple one here okay of course we'll give it a name modulate called modulate for now and let's see what we got in terms of modulation let's see we got the intensity for vibrato that could sound funny actually let me give that a try turn it on for both sample layers compile the thing and have a listen <laughs> okay maybe that's a bit weird Actually, yeah, let's look for something else. Uh, let me have a quick look. Modulation to the fitted temporary panning. Yes, actually, we could use, for example, panning. That should work. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I guess I need to. I guess I need to enable that one via a switch. Of course, it's turned off by default. Let's see. Call that, for now, we call that enable. And modulation F or toggle. Exactly, that is what we want. Okay. Compile that one again. Uh, maybe we need another knob to change the frequency. But let me check that quick. And. Yeah, I think it does something. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool, and I think that is it for now.
And yeah, as always, uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a great time with Contact Geomic and do some crazy and fun things. And yeah, feel free to um, feel free to check back for new tutorials on Rigid Audio as well. Okay, thanks for your time and bye bye.